BitTrip Presents Runner 2 Future Legend of Rhythmalion is the latest game from Gaijin Games, creators of the BitTrip series, which first released on WiiWare and later for 3DS, PC, and mobile devices. It's a sequel to 2010's BitTrip Runner, which is perhaps their most well-known and critically acclaimed game, and rightfully so, as it was definitely the best of the bunch. And I do mean was, because now that Runner 2 has arrived, it's not only clearly their finest work, but also one of the best rhythm platforming games ever made. What's so striking about Runner 2 is how well everything just works. The clean, stylistic, high-definition visuals are a huge step up from the Atari-like graphics of the original Runner, and the music is even more infectious, although I do wish there were more tracks. Even more importantly, the gameplay has been fine-tuned to near perfection, making it one of the most fun games you'll play on any system. To those who are new, Runner 2 is a fairly simple proposition. It's an auto-running platforming game, which means you're always moving, and therefore always in harm's way. You can't stop to catch your breath, and need to constantly look out for what's in front of you, be it enemies, obstacles, platforms, or whatever else the developers decide to throw at you. Being a linear 2D game, the only goal is to survive and collect whatever you can in the process. But looks can be deceiving, Runner 2 is not an easy game, and you will often die. Thankfully though, unlike so many other fiendishly hard games, Runner 2 is almost never frustrating due to the ingenious design of immediately putting you back in the action as soon as you fail. That means when you hit an obstacle or fall off a pit, you'll be pulled back to the beginning of the stage or checkpoint instantaneously, and you'll never have to wait long to get back to the gameplay. I can't begin to describe how wonderful this is, and how so many other games can learn from it. It may not seem like a big deal, but when you take into account just how many times you'll die throughout the game, the time saved is tremendous, and makes the game so much more satisfying to play for long sessions. Just imagine, for instance, that if every time you were to die in Runner 2, you'd be taken back to the world map. The game would be so horribly broken by this that it would alter my whole opinion of the game. It's fundamentally built into the design, which makes it okay for levels to be so hard. In other words, the game is hard as shit, but it's also casual in all the right places. Other developers should take note, as wasting time to artificially increase difficulty is a dated trope and not fun. Thankfully, Runner 2 does not suffer from this common complaint. New to Runner 2 is the ability to dance, which may seem useless at first, but is actually there to rack up points. And points do matter, because online leaderboards extend the gameplay and give you an incentive to master the levels to beat your friend's scores. There's also plenty of new gameplay elements that are gradually introduced to the player without excessive and text-heavy tutorials. Everything you do in the game will be learned naturally. This is a game for gamers by gamers. And speaking of which, Nintendo fans will immediately recognize Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, who narrates the story in the game as well as some comedic faux advertisements when you load up the software. Which is perhaps a parody of Xbox Live and its hideous method of shoving advertisements down paying customers' throats. Today's thrilling episode is brought to you in part by Shorty's Milk Brine. It could be worse. Charles does an excellent job and makes the game world seem all the more alive. The story is short and to the point, which is much appreciated since the last thing this game needs is a story that takes itself too seriously. Of course, you won't need to worry about that with level names such as Morning Wood, which harken back to the good old days of Rareware and their wacky sense of humor. In fact, I've noticed several similarities to the old Donkey Kong Country games in my playthrough, which is definitely a good thing. There are about 100 main levels in Runner 2, with special retro SNES-inspired stages to unlock via alternate paths and secret areas within certain levels. There's also a wide assortment of unlockable characters and costumes, which you gain by acquiring treasure chests, which often require a key to unlock. All in all, there's quite a bit of content in Runner 2, but for a game this good, there can never be quite enough. I've never asked a developer for DLC before, but there's always a first time for everything, and I'd love to see another handful of levels from Gaijin Games. For $15, Runner 2 is absolutely an essential download. It's one of the best games on Wii U, and my personal favorite game of 2013 so far. I cannot recommend it enough, and I give it a 9.5 out of 10.